Hey, what's up everybody? It's James here. When you're socializing with people, do you sometimes get stuck when people give you one-worded answers? For example, you really want to talk to someone and, and start to have a good conversation. So you ask someone a question, hey, how you're doing? And then the person says, good. Or they say, nothing. Or if you ask them, did you have a good week? And then they say, yeah. This can be a bane when it comes to socializing. And to be honest, it can be frustrating too. So how do you get past this classic conversation block? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk all about it. All right, well, let's get started. When you ask people questions in the attempt to get deeper in a conversation, but all they say is yes, good, or nothing, these are, these are hard to go by because they're basically one-worded responses. The reason why these one-worded responses are so hard to keep a conversation going is because they literally are meant to make a conversation hard to continue by the very design, and people don't even realize it. You see, one-word responses really have no information, and being there's no information to go by, it's hard to keep a conversation going based on the information that's already been said. The good news, however, is there's ways to avoid these kind of responses. And this goes down to the type of questions you ask. Certain questions will often permit one-word responses, while other types of questions will permit non-one-word responses, more open responses. Questions that often follow one-word responses are often yes or no questions, or questions that are there to describe a person's feeling or emotions. You see, even though emotions can be complicated sometimes, they can often be defined in just one word responses, such as, I feel good, I feel not so good, I feel okay. And how the heck are you gonna to respond to that? So, focus on questions that will give non-one-worded responses, and these are called open-ended questions. Now, what are open-ended questions exactly? Well, open-ended questions are questions that force a person to explain something, as opposed to answering yes or no, or feeling good, feeling bad, which requires just one word responses. Open-ended questions, in contrast, require a person to explain something, and they literally make it so you can't respond with one word responses. Here's some examples of some open-ended questions. Instead of asking, was your day good yesterday? Say, what did you do yesterday? Instead of asking how school or work was, ask, what did you do at school or work? Say a person owns a dog, instead of asking them, do you like owning dogs? Ask them, what is it about owning dogs you enjoy? What do you like about this video game? Tell me what you like about this movie. Instead of saying, did you like that movie? Did you like that video game? It also helps if you ask questions that involve the four W's and the H, such as who, what, why, and when, or how. This will assure answers with more information that you can jump on to help you continue a conversation with more topics at hand. The more information rich the answer has, the more information you have at your disposal to keep a conversation going, the more subjects you have to pick from. Now I talked about how it's important to ask open-ended questions that avoid one-word responses. Now, I wanna talk about going on the other end too, how you can avoid telling one-word responses to other people when people ask you questions as this can also avoid making the conversation get stuck as well. One trick is to actually come up with two answers, such as some facts to go with your answer. For example, if someone asks where you're from, I'm from Charleston, South Carolina, but I try to avoid just simply saying, I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. Instead, I will say, I'm from Charleston, South Carolina, and it's an area in the South that often has warm weather, which I like, but the weather's kind of crazy in the summer. And it's also a historic city, it's also a city where the Civil War started. Now this answer doesn't have to be as long as this example, but it can contain a couple of facts where people can respond on instead of a one-worded response like the name of the city where a person can't really respond on. Also, it always helps to research maybe the area that you live. Not every city may have as much history as Charleston, but if you learn about your area, you'll be surprised about the interesting facts you'll find. And it's, it's always a good pointer to share these facts when someone asks you where you're from. Another example is when someone asks you, what do you like to do for fun? Instead of saying, I like playing video games, list some of your favorite video games, like your top three. And you can even quickly say why you like playing those games in a way that's still pretty brief as a response. Or instead of just saying, I like watching movies and TV shows on Netflix and Hulu, list some of your top three favorite movies 
or type of genre you like and why. I like to watch TV shows like romantic comedies because I like hearing about people's stories. Or you can say, I like watching movies like Fast and Furious because I love action movies because it keeps me on the edge of the seat and I love cars. Again, you want to use the words who, what, why, when, and how. Of course, if you're first starting to talk to someone and they ask you a question, try not to make it too long. Try to keep it fairly brief, but at least try to provide enough information that the other person can respond on. Another trick that can help keep a conversation going when someone asks you a question is uh, is try to use what's called the one-two punch. I talked about this in another video. But briefly, the one-two punch technique is just simply saying something in response and then follow it with a question. Like for example, if someone asks you, do you like to go fishing? Say, yeah, I love to go fishing. A lot of times fish over in the Cooper River. Where do you like to fish? You wanna provide at least some bait for the other person to conversate on. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If you found this video helpful, please give this video a like and share it with a friend. Because if you do that, then more videos will show up to other people and also help them too. Well, thank you for watching and have a good day. If you liked this video and found it helpful, I bet you will also like this video where I talk about another socialization conversation tip on the video link below.